So you're in New York? I'm in Manhattan, New York City, yes. So it must be yeah, it's cool. 44, yeah. So you're going tour. I like it here. Yeah? I'm I'm leaving on Sunday. With Sebastian and, Bach? Uh, yes, yes. We're just doing America, and it'll be fun. Right on. You've played with a lot of interesting bands in your past. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, very fortunate to be to have been around some cool bands and uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of cool bands. It's really uh, it's a fun job. I like my job. <laughs> Dream job. You play with Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. Yeah, she's cool. She's the best, man. You play much concerts with her? Um, no, just a handful. I was kind of like an in-between guy, um, and uh, just did, didn't do that many, but. Uh, it was it was great. And you play with UFO? Yeah, I just did their U, U, U.S. tour, which was about 25 dates, and then I went over and did Germany with them. Uh, just not last weekend, but the one before that. Ever ever meet Pete Hoy of a uh, UFO? No, I've never met him. Uh, Former Ozzy Osbourne bassist. Yeah, he 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 wasn't well, so I I was playing bass. Oh, well, actually, that was the case in, in Germany, but in America, he couldn't get his his visa. Um, I think it's prior uh, prior things they, they check really, they check really carefully, and I think uh, something to do with, um, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know, so I'm not going to speculate. Any Pee-wee stories with Ozzy Osbourne you know of? I don't think he played with Ozzy very long at all. He just, like... A week or so. No, he was with Ozzy for a very, very short time, like a week or two. So, you shared stage with Guns N' Roses also. Oh yeah, that was amazing. It was, it was so amazing. They were, I mean, we got to be good friends with those guys because they were just so down to earth and so nice and genuine. And uh, that's interesting, you know, from a lot of people that say opposite to what you're saying. So they're really nice guys, Guns N' Roses. Yeah, I think, I think. Everyone, almost everyone who meets them is surprised because the way the press makes them out to be, it, it's it's really different from the way they are. And I think that's, it comes with the territory, you know, it, it's probably because the, the record is, you know, it's been out and people are frustrated by that. Yeah. But it's not out for a reason and, and, and that's Axel's. That's Axel's choice. Mm. Uh, it's his, you know, it's his record. It's his band, you know. But anyway, back to my point. When people meet him and they realize how cool and how nice and how accommodating they are, they're they're pretty surprised. <laughs> so, and they're consistently like that. They're consistently nice and accommodating and, and respectful. Any news on Chinese democracy that you know of? I hear it's coming out. I hear it coming out. You know. Are but, you gonna uh, be Metallica? When's Metallica's coming out? September. I don't think it will. No. Uh, it'll come out before that. I mean, I don't. I really don't know. I'm really not privy to any inside information, but I don't think so. So you would be nice if it came out this year. Oh, we great. Read. In their solo band. So I was I was asked to play in Bumblefoot's solo band um, at a festival in Massachusetts, but Baz booked the show. In Phoenix on the same day, so I had to, I had to pull out, which was which was um, you know I was I was upset about. Hey, how's Sebastian Buck doing these days? He's great, man. He's just great singer, great front man. He's just awesome. Where are you guys starting up your tour at? We start in Memphis on uh, the eighth. I leave on Sunday, which is probably the six, which is the sixth. And we have one rehearsal in Memphis on the 7th, and then we we'll start the tour. I wish you guys luck. I hope it goes good. And oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. We just did um, about 15 or so shows uh, maybe three weeks ago. So we're, we're, it's going to be great. How's the crowd reaction? You guys play a lot of the Skid Row songs still? or We only do about maybe six, but we do ten new Sebastian songs off of Angel Down. So, definitely a lot less Skid Row stuff. But I'm sure... Certain songs, the, the 
certain songs that the, the, the people just they really want to hear, you know. Oh, so, sure. You know, there's a few that you have to play. So you guys find they're great. Do you guys probably play them better than Skid Row? <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian seems to think so. Yeah, that's for sure. He, you know, he wishes them luck. Mm -hmm. You know, he wishes them the best. You know, he's 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 not bitter. So your musical influences, who you idolize and stuff. I think my favorite band of all time would be Pink Floyd. So you're a big Pink Floyd fan. Huge. Yeah. I think they they embody so many things that I aspire to be. I mean, I love I love a zillion bands, but if I had to pick one. Did you ever play with Pink Floyd? <laughs> Uh, not if Roger Waters would have his way. <laughs> not yet, huh? George Lynch, you played with him a while back. Yeah, yeah, great guy, man. We're still friends. He, he, I just, uh, he just emailed me the other day. He's a cool guy, and and that's cool when you. It's great when you play with someone and, and you and you become friends and you stay friends. Then then you know it was a good thing. And and I, I'm that's the case with with almost every band I've ever been in. You know. So yeah, George is cool, and uh, and I think he's doing okay. That's excellent. Like a like a professional musician, you have to, uh, I'm sure, be kind and friendly and nice, you know, to keep your jobs and stuff. I think I think that's very true. I think people who aren't in the in the business, and maybe some people who are who 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 don't get the big picture may not realize that playing your instrument is only one aspect of what you have to offer. You know, there's a lot of things. It's 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 if you can sing, it's how you perform, it's your attitude, you know, and uh how how well you can get along when you're not playing and just hanging out, you know, on the bus or whatever. It's really a lot of things rolled into one, and and you know some people might be the best musicians in the world, but people just can't stand being around them. That person's not going to get the right gig or, or many gigs or whatever the case. He's not going to get what he wants or she wants, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I think some musicians may not realize that, or or, or some people might not realize that. But mm -hmm. I try to be conscious. I try to be conscious of all the different aspects. And the musicians are more, um, you know, talkable and friendly, and not ass. You know, uh, they're, yeah. they're very more uh, hired. Who's playing in um, UFO at this moment? Vinnie Moore. Vinnie Moore, excellent guitar player. Yeah, he's incredible. He's incredible, and he's he, and, and he's a perfect example of what I was saying. The nicest, most humble guy. Um, I play with a lot of humble guys, and I'm. I'm I'm realizing that's one of the reasons why they're successful. My metal Mike Klauschak and Bobby Jerzombek, they're all, and, and uh, the guys in UFO, they're, they're, they're so humble, you know, and Vinny, get back to Vinny, he's just such a master of his instrument. Yeah. He's so damn nice. He's such a nice guy, man. So it's a pleasure playing with him. And it, a, a really good um, person to come in after Shanker, a really good choice. Any funny gig stories? Um, funny stories. <laughs> I can't think any off the top of my head. I think every gig is kind of funny. <laughs> any any bloopers? <laughs> any bloopers. No, the, the tour pretty much ran like clockwork, but I'm sure there'll be some bloopers in the future. You break strings on stage sometimes? Uh, not in a long time. No. Very rarely. Very rare. Basses don't yeah. break strings too often anyways. No. But I usually have a spare just in case. So how many basses do you bring on tour? I usually just bring two. What's uh, your amplification? I use vintage um, Ampeg SVTs. The old ones. Do so you like better the old ones than the new ones? Yes, I do. What do you think yes, of digital yeah. recording to analog recording? I think they both serve a good purpose, and I think in conjunction, in conjunction is the, the best scenario. Because digital is very uh, easy to navigate, 
and it's gotten really good in quality, but there's certain instruments that it's really important to, to record to tape. Drums, bass, for sure. Lower The lower instruments are really important because you get that low end bump from analog tape. And that's what I try to do. I, I record to analog tape first, and then I dump to Pro Tools, and then I work in digital and mix in digital. Yeah, it's surprising a lot of people do that. To this day. Yeah. How how uh, did you audition for Sebastian Bach? How did you join that band? I, I didn't audition. I knew Sebastian because I was in a band called Spread Eagle. Right. And when he when he was in Skid Row, and we were you know we I was in Skid Row and he was into Spread Eagle, so we became friends back then. And uh, he even came on stage and, and sung with us at least once. And with Spread Eagle. And, uh, you know, just a little guest appearance. And, you know, we we stayed in touch over the years, not not all the time, just occasionally. And then one time, um, he, he told me he needed a bass player. And uh, I, Steve DiGiorgio was, was slowly phasing. I guess it was a mutual decision that he was being phased out. And... Um, so I didn't really audition, but I did do some rehearsals with them before I gigged with them. Like, like the first time I played with them, Steve was doing a gig, but he couldn't make the rehearsals. So I filled in on the rehearsals just so they could have, a, you know, the feel of the bass in the right. rehearsal. So I guess you could say that was like an audition, but not really. Hmm. Steve DiGennario, how you play with him before? He's an interesting bass player. Oh, he's awesome. I, um, I met him in San Francisco when we played there, and he was really, really nice to me. Does and he still play Fretless Face? Yes, he plays Fretless. He's, he's such a great musician. Yes, I've heard his stuff with, with a lot of different people, yeah. yeah. Spread Eagle, what happened to that? You know, uh, you guys used to be in Metal Edge magazine every uh, issue. Yeah. And uh, um, I guess it just, you know... Music was changing. Um, so some of the members of the band got a little derailed, and um, and we just never got where we we and a lot of other people felt like we should be. And I guess the band just broke up, and then we got back together. And you know, years later. And is this day spread eagle going gigging anytime? Um, well, no, because I've been busy, so busy with Sebastian and with UFO, but um, we toured last in 2006, and we reissued the debut record on November Records, and it's remastered, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, well, I, I heard some on your um, MySpace site. Where do, you, where do you go about to find Spread Eagle, just in case for the audience listening? Uh, November Records, with an L. It's it's just like November with an L, November. November. dot com. November. Spread Eagle. How how successful has Spread Eagle gotten in its day? You know, it's as far as people talking about us and our perception and videos on it on Handbangers Ball and all that stuff, very successful. But as far as actual, um success of generating money and things like that and selling tons of records n not really mm. so the perception was kind of off of, of the reality because we were like you said we were in Metal Edge constantly we were in all those magazines constantly and we were on you know on Headbangers Ball every week and then we started creeping into you know s um, a, a, a small rotation of just being on MTV and people thought you know you know, it, it, well, I thought it was, you know, going to take off, but it never did, which is a shame. Because I really felt that band was special, and it should have. Hmm. But, you know, things happen or don't happen for a reason. I, I don't live in the past, but it was a, it was an important band to my musical makeup. They, they, they didn't, they liked, you know, stuff with a dirtier, a dirty edge to it, you know. So who, who were your... Uh your uh, rivals in that era? 
I, I don't I don't know if we had any rivals, but the bands that we for the commercial success, I mean. Well, I'd say bands that we were in the same genre of would be definitely the the dirtier LA bands like Guns N' Roses and LA Guns and and uh, even Faster Pussycat, I'd say. Yeah. And also they failed too to to yeah. capture a big spot. And uh, yeah. Well, you know when you when uh, you open old Metal Edge magazines, you always see Firehouse in the covers. You know, and uh, Faster Pussycat had an era that you know they're always in the magazines. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a whole collection of uh, you know Metal Edge magazines from those days, and yeah, I have a lot of Spread Eagle posters. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of them. I'm sure you have them also. I uh, actually don't. But you don't? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got lots of those magazines. All right, have a great night. You too, man. Bye. All right, bye.